My mother was the consummate photo taker and movie maker. I can hear her now saying, come on kids, we're gonna have our pictures made. Or Buster, go run get the camera when she saw some action or we were at a family gathering. Buster's the name my dad went by. His real name was Oscar Andy Holland. So you can see why he wanted to be called Buster. I don't know where the family's idea of photography came from. It was not cheap in those days to buy and develop film and photos. None of our relatives or friends did it to the extent that we did. And believe me, we didn't have much when we were growing up. I've agonized for several years on how to go about preserving the content of these original 8mm home movies. Who would even care to see them? My mother had transferred them onto VHF in no logical order, and later I transferred them to DVD. It didn't bother my brother and my sister much that they were out of order. After all, we grew up watching them that way and we knew most of the characters in the film. We would have movie night periodically. A white sheet would be placed over a curtain rod above one of the windows in the living room, and Dad would run the projector. After a while, he taught my brother and then me how to run the projector. I remember arguing over whose turn it was when that special night came. It's my turn. No, it's my turn. You did it last time. Eventually it would get settled. I can't count the nights that either as a family or with relatives or friends over, we sat and watched the eight millimeter films one by one, flickering when the film got stuck and splicing the film when it broke. Every reel was spliced multiple times. We always wended, ended the evening by showing one cartoon that we had, Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse, plane pulling the bad guy through a bell tower. Sometimes we watch that cartoon over and over by ourselves. The film reel was made of cardboard and the slot was so worn that I had to make a paper shim in order to get it to grab onto the projector feed spindle. I realized after my generation no one would know who was in the films or for that matter likely care, particularly if they stayed in the same state of disorder. They'd fall into the darkness as relics often do. I hated the thought of that happening, so I decided to attempt to breathe a little life into them by identifying a few of the characters for future generations and putting the old movies in chronological order as best I could. It may not seem like it to the viewer, but I've cleaned up the films as best I could, being the novice, novice uh, etiographer, I think that's a word, I am. The uh, job could be better, but it would take a lot more time for the marginal value that I thought would be gained. We're just lucky that my mother had the foresight to give us what she did. So hopefully this digital copy will survive long enough that it's now being viewed by my grand-grand-nephew or niece, or my brother or sister's great-great-grandson or granddaughter, and seeing part of the family lineage in action during the mid-20th century right now. One way or the other, as boring as this may seem at the moment, let's hope that it brightens the day of someone in our future generations. If nothing else, they can get a kick out of the crude technology that existed in the past. Just imagine what technology is going to be like in the year 2099. My name is Clint Holland. My given name, Clinton Hal Holland, born in 1944. I'm the one in the center of this photo you're viewing. And that's my sister, Sonia Rehollen, 1948, on the left, and my brother, William Chad Holland, 1942, on the right. He goes by Chad. We fought as kids, but of course stuck together when the going got tough. And here we are. Chad is almost 78, I'm near 76, and Sonia, still the baby, is 72. And we're all still going strong. 
This is my mother, Louise Catherine Holland, born in 1915, and she lived until 2005, almost 90 years. I'm guessing that this was a high school graduation photo, I'm not really sure. But she was a beautiful person inside and out. And she was the epitome of ethics and honesty. And here's my dad. As I said before, his given name was Oscar Andy Holland. But you better not call him that. Better not call him anything but Buster. He was also born in 1915. Try as he may, he never seemed to settle into the family life. And his life was cut short when he died at 39 in a solo car crash late one evening on his way home from a night on the town. I was 10 years old and I remember it like yesterday. It was a horrible experience for all of us, leaving three kids and our mother to fend for ourselves. That must be where we learned our perseverance. My mother took the bull by the horns and forged the head and pushed us to do the same. I'm describing some of these characters so you might be able to pick them out in the movies that follow. This is my mother's father, William Henry Helbert, Papa as she called him, but known to others as Will. He was born in 1874 in Arkansas and died in 1946 in Wellington, Texas, when I was about two years old. She always spoke of how smart, innovative, and clever he was. Even though he had very little formal education, he taught himself how to read and write. You won't see them in the movies that follow, but his father, my great-grandfather, was Henry P. Helbert, born in 1848 in Whitman, Arkansas. He married Priscilla Crone, my great-grandmother, and they had two children, including Grandpa Will. Grandpa Will married Thelly Guthrie, Mom's mother and my grandmother. They first lived in Rogers, Texas, and later moved to Quail, a small farming community near the Texas Panhandle in the town where my mother was born. Grandma Thelly lived until I was about 12 or 13 years old. For a lot of that time, she lived near us with my Aunt Jewel and Uncle Price in Chowchilla, California. So I got to spend a lot of time with her in my early years and learn from her wisdom. She was a small little thing, but she was a force of nature and a hard worker. I remember her always wearing a bonnet particularly when she was out chopping cotton or picking cotton or picking strawberries. This is her parents, my maternal great-great-grandparents. Her father, John H. Guthrie, was born in 1843 and died in 1907 at the age of 64. And her mother, Sarah Margaret Havens Guthrie, was born in 1846 and died in 1927 at the age of 81. This is grandmother Helbert Thelly, later in life with her brothers and sisters and their husband and wives that were still living. All of these folks were born somewhere around 1875 and my best guess is that this photo was taken in the mid 1950s. Her sister, my great aunt Kate, is the only other person in the photo that I really knew. She was a large, fun, light-hearted woman, and I always felt safe around her. She's the woman to the left of my grandmother in the photo. These young girls are my mother's older sisters and my aunts. Gladys Helbert, on the left, was born in 1901. My indelible memory of her was every time I saw her later in life, she would tell the story of asking me, when I was four or five years old, what I wanted to be when I grew up. I answered, a man. <laughs> Everyone would get out a kick out of that, and I'm still working on it, I guess. Jewel Helbert, on the right, was born in 1903. She was the cook in the family. Bake, bake, bake. 
We never went without a wonderful meal when we visited her and my Uncle Price. All of my mother's siblings were born in Texas. In this photo, you see those two young girls from the last photo, my aunts, in the top row, now grown up with their husbands, Calvin and Price. They lived nearby us in Chowchilla, California. The little girl sitting in the lower right is my mother, and to the left of her is Grandma Thelly and Grandpa Will. Then further to the left is her younger brother, U.V. Helbert, and older brother, William Thomas Helbert. We always knew him as Uncle W.T. or Uncle Dub. Both of those brothers started from nothing as dirt farmers and became highly successful cotton farmers in the Hale Center, Texas area. Uncle Dub later sold his thousands of acres and bought a new farm in Waco, Texas. This is another photo of the five siblings together. The boys lived in Texas and the girls lived in California. Between them, I was blessed with nine cousins. The age range was large, but we got together a lot and I have many fond memories. This photo is of the Parsons, my grandmother's parents on my father's side and my maternal great-great-grandparents. I didn't know them. This is my grandmother on my father's side. Her name was Sadie Holland. She was a very tall woman with a commanding presence. I knew her, but not very well since she lived in Texas and we lived in California. She died a few years after my father passed away when I was about 12 or 13 years old. I never knew my grandfather, Major Holland, and didn't hear much about him from my dad as a child or anyone else. This is my dad's brother and his sisters. His younger brother, MJ, is on the left. He had three children and lived in Wellington, Texas. Next is younger sister, Annalee. She and her husband, Cecil, eventually moved from Texas to California to live near us. They had four children. All of the children were younger than me, and they've all been dead for several years. They had tough lives and died from various causes. Suffice to say, it was a very sad situation. This is a closer shot of my Uncle MJ. He was a tall, very good looking man. In the early years, my mom and dad were very happy. After mom graduated from high school in 1933, she married my dad and then went to cosmetology school. She worked in a beauty shop and then opened her own shop in Wellington, Texas. My dad was farming there, but not on his own land, and times were tough. He decided he was going to become a diesel mechanic, and they loaded everything into a little 1930s Model T truck, and they moved to L.A., where my dad had a friend that was going to the same school. I can remember Mom telling me the story about entering California in that Model T. She said after they had crossed into California from Arizona, they saw cars passing them, waving like crazy, and thought, well, how friendly everyone is in California. They finally realized that the people were waving to get their attention, that the contents in the back of the truck were on fire. Mom said they lost everything but the truck. I'm not sure I ever heard the real story, but Dad did not finish diesel school. Did he flunk out? Did he run out of money? I'm not sure, but that's when mom and dad moved to Lee Grand, California. I think they got a little stake from Grandpa Will and bought a few acres where my dad farmed. And my mother started her new beauty shop at home. My dad was very handy and had a great deal of ingenuity. He knew how to work with fine wood and was good at building things. He converted the garage into my mother's beauty shop, and he was also a farmer. In addition to that, he raised turkeys for a while. Along came my brother Chad, and things seemed to be going in the right direction. They bought a few more acres with their savings. I came along, then my sister. I guess those were about the most successful times for them together. 
Things began to fall apart when my dad spent more time drinking with his friends than he did at home taking care of business. On a happier note, and before the unraveling, we only lived about 80 miles from Yosemite National Park. It was practically in our backyard, and a sight to behold. We spent a lot of time visiting there when I was young, and before us kids were even conceived, it was a place mom and dad loved sharing with friends and family. This is my grandmother and my grandfather standing in front of an old cut redwood where the rings are delineated to show the age of the tree. Redwood trees are among some of the largest and oldest living trees on earth. One place I read the estimated age to be about 2200 years, but then another said 3800. Whichever is correct, it's old. This is my mom sitting on a walkway they put on a fallen redwood tree. Just look at the size of that tree. In the movies, you'll see my mom sitting on the walkway, a bit afraid of the walk, and then my dad in his signature hat, galloping down the walkway to show her how easy it is. He was a handsome man, and from my memory, a little cavalier. This Yosemite photo has folks from both sides of the family. My dad's older sisters are on each side of his mother, and his younger sister is to the right holding one of our cousins. Then you see my mom holding my brother Chad and her mother on the right. I remember that fish pond my mother is sitting on the edge of. It was always one of our favorite points of interest. It was connected to the hatchery and stocked with the same rainbow trout that was found in the Merced River, which ran through Yosemite Valley. The hatchery and fish pond are long gone, along with the firefalls that we used to watch and wonder from the valley floor. There is a phenomenon where the sunset in late February hits El Capitan Horse Trail Falls in Yosemite just right and makes it look like a firefall. But that's not the one I'm talking about, and that's not what you see in this photo. What I'm speaking of is actual burning hot embers that were spilled from the top of Glacier Point to the valley floor 3,000 feet below. It created the spectacular appearance of a waterfall of fire. It happened at 9 p.m. in the evenings, and once it was over, we knew it was time to go to bed. They stopped performing this act in the late 1960s. Yes, we all loved Yosemite and our home movies start right there in early 1940s. So relax and enjoy the show. Now I'll warn you that some of these first uh, films are a bit compromised, but you know, I just didn't have the heart to uh, put them on the cutting room floor since they're old and old memories anyway the later later films will get better so if you can bear with it i think you'll enjoy it Grandpa Hubbard is sitting having a picnic and then you see my dad walking up with a group. Here at the opening of one of Yosemite's famous tunnels, you see my mom and her sister, Jewel, and daughter, Imogene, and uh, then son, Wendell. 
And then my mom's feeding the deer, which she shouldn't be doing. Then you see grandpa. And then there they are again, my mom and her sister, uh, Jewel and Imogene, the daughter, and grandma, Grandma Thelly, throwing snowballs, and now my dad's arrived. There he is. This is that huge redwood tree with the boardwalk on it I mentioned. And there's Aunt Jewel and Mom coming up from behind. And this is where I told you earlier that uh, she sat down there and was a little skittish about walking on that plank. And uh, then here in a second, you're gonna see my dad come galloping down there. There he goes, just showing her how easy it is. Here's Grandma and Grandpa Helbert in front of that tree again that you saw the photo of earlier. There's mom and her sister, Jewel, and her mom and dad, and there comes Uncle Price. You see he's limping. He uh, was crawling over a fence and had the gun propped up, shotgun, and the shotgun went off and about blew his leg off. At one time they had this uh, huge redwood tree that you could drive a car through, but for safety reasons or it fell down or whatever, it's long gone. And that's Grandma and Grandpa walking up. And then after them, uh, you're going to see the four people walking up, which is going to be my Uncle Price and Aunt Jewel and their son and daughter, Wendell and Imogene. Wendell just turned 90 years old. And then came Grandma and Grandpa and then Mother following up from behind. And then there comes my dad again and all his swagger. As we leave Yosemite, we move to videos mostly taken in Lee Grand, California. That's, as I said, where we were uh, born and raised. And uh, it's about 80 miles, uh, I mentioned, from uh, Yosemite. So enjoy these videos of our younger years up through, oh, the early part of uh, 1950. That's baby Chad being carried by Uncle Cecil, uh, my dad's sister's husband. And then you see uh, dad and his younger brother MJ and sister Annalie walking forward. And uh, after that, you're gonna see Aunt Jewel, my mother's uh, sister, is throwing a hissy fit because uh, she didn't wanna have her, uh, her movie taken. <laughs> There's your daughter running by trying to get away from the camera. I guess they're all a little camera shy. And then that's Uncle Price walking forward there. Dad is training uh, Bossy, our dog. Or was that Ring? <laughs> Ring or Bossy won. Anyway, he really loved training that dog. There's baby Chad. Just a newborn. Oh my goodness, what a interesting time that must have been for my 
mom and dad. No movies of Sonya and me at that age, so I guess that the first the firstborn always gets that uh, that attention. Well, here we are, Dad's washing the car. We're getting ready to head out on a road trip uh, to Texas for my grandfather's funeral. So this would have been about 1946. Here you see Chad with his hat on doing a little discovery along the way. My dad's uh, carrying me out the door there. I'm about two years old. These are some other cousins that uh, were met. We're now in Texas. I'm not sure, but that could be Bonnie Jean Halbert that was there in the little jacket that you see there. And she's walking forward holding Chad's hand. That would be my Uncle UV's oldest uh, daughter, if that was the case. This is my older cousin Morris holding my hand. And then you see his sister in the uh, cape dress coming out. That's Neva. And they are the son and daughter of my Aunt Gladys. And then you see my cousin Don and his mother. He died at an early age. This is my Uncle W.T.'s family. There's my Uncle Calvin, my mother's oldest sister's husband, and uh, Morris and Neva's father. And then there's the mother, my mother's oldest sister, Gladys, and then Thelly, Grandma Thelly. Then you see cousins again, uh, Neva Johnson and Don Helbert. There's my mom, Louise Holland. I sort of take after her, last one out. That's her younger brother, UV, and his wife, uh, Norma. Now at the cemetery, Grandpa Will Helbert's burial site in Texas. Grandma and you'll see uh, Chad and uh, me as the two-year-old and then my mom and dad in this clip. We're visiting my dad's uh, side of the family after the uh, 
visit to the cemetery. I believe that is uh, Mary Lou, who would be the daughter of one of my uh, dad's older sisters. And then that's his mother, Sadie Holland, the tall woman I told you about. Anyway, and there's Chad with his grandma. These are my dad's two older sisters, my Aunt Grace on the left and my Aunt Lola on the right. I have fond, fond memories of Aunt Grace in particular. Looks like we were lucky enough to find some snow along the way before that, uh, before that trip ended for us. We loved our dogs and always seemed to have two or three around when I was growing up, particularly when my dad was still living. Well, I guess we love that old porch too, because it uh, seems to have become quite a stage as you'll see in the movies to come. Looks like my brother Chad and I are having a little problem with getting the puppies and our teddy bears all set up for the shot here. And now look, that has become the shot. This is our babysitter, Judy Espinoza. I remember how fun and warm and caring she was. A little bashful too, it seems. And now we're having a family gathering in, in our front yard here. Uh, the fellow in the white shirt is uh, my cousin Wendell. I mentioned him earlier. He just turned 90 years old. And that was his father with him. And these are, this is all my mother's side of the family, the Helberts. Mom picking me up. I keep mentioning Wendell, so I thought I'd show you a photograph of him right here at 90 years old, since right now he's our oldest living relative. Dad showing off the dog, jumping through the tire. He was so proud of that. I remember him training that dog. That's Grandma Feli leaning against the propane tank. Oh, a little side story here. That's the same propane tank that, uh, that a friend of ours, Nat Bianchi, when he was over, he was climbing the tree. He stepped on a pipe and broke the pipe on the propane tank my sister was clear in the top of the tree and she couldn't get down she was scared to get down they had to call the fire department my dad happened to be in town and he was a volunteer fireman so in he comes riding on the back of the fire truck to see this thing happening with his daughter that's the brooder house where the baby turkeys were raised now i once jumped off the top of that with the umbrella from a tractor uh, it didn't uh, it didn't work very well at one time my dad had uh, over 10,000 turkeys another one of his adventures
How many times did we watch our dad drive off to town and wonder when he would be returning? But then we always had our snakes and other things to play with. Chad was in the big league here, being invited to a real birthday party. Truthfully, I had to look back on these films myself to see what a good horseman my dad was. I think he learned this talent uh, as a kid in Texas. As I said, my dad was multi-talented. In addition to breaking those horses, he invented this hay rake apparatus when he was raising alfalfa hay. I guess it grouped the hay and then somehow lifted up, so it left it in, uh, in orderly piles. I have such fond memories of that old Ford tractor. It's the first vehicle I was ever allowed to drive. My brother Chad and I ran upon a similar one that was for sale a few years back and had our photograph taken. And of course there was the pig raising too. Now I don't really remember a lot about that. I was a little younger but uh, I do remember the smell. There she is. Sister Sonia came along and then there were three. We spent a lot of time at my Aunt Jules where my grandma lived and she loved her roses. I can remember her just caring for those and that's where I learned to love that smell. Mom and Dad expressed their love together and Mom and Grandma, no mail. We were always excited to arrive at my Aunt Jewel and Uncle Price's house. There was always so much to do and they showed us so much love. This is their daughter Imogene and then my mother and her sister Jewel walking up the walk. Mom is holding their cute little dog named Rock but 
Chad can't wait to show it off himself. Uncle Price was always such a jokester. Well, first of all, he wore that apron when he worked. But here he is, he's walking up and down the walk pretending he's drunk. But I don't think he ever had a drink in his life. At least I never saw him take one. By now, I'm sure you've noticed that Chad was not too interested in performing anymore. Well, I have to admit, there were a lot of takes. Here I am trying to perform for the camera with this cake with a nest on it and eggs, but the eggs keep rolling off and falling on the ground. And Sonia kept going back to the dishwater with a dish rag and sucking on the dish rag. I guess, I guess she was a little thirsty or maybe just curious.
This is Frankie holding Sister Sonia. Frankie and Herbert were mom and dad's best friends. In fact, they were the friends that they went to meet in LA when dad was gonna to go to diesel school. Well, Frankie painted this uh, oil painting of my mom's old home place, and I still have it hanging in my house. I wonder where it is now. These are my cousins, Lenny and Daryl. I mentioned them before. This is my, my dad's sister's boys that I said had uh, all died at an early age. Such a shame. In the black hat is Claude of Claude and Montine, who were very good friends of my Aunt Jewel and Uncle Price. This is Frankie and Herbert's son, Herbie, our playmate. Back at the ranch in Lee Grand, Sonia gets her turn at riding on the tractor and driving it, or sort of driving it. Meanwhile, Chad and I are showing off our skills on our bicycles. Look at Chad doing that hooker. Dad's starting to look a little haggard here. Keep in mind that he was only 39 years old when he died. This is dad with Sonia, she's growing up. Maybe she's asking him to bring her some frucy jute. That's what she called juicy fruit gum she'd ask for when he went to town. And then that's her, uh, Grandma Holland, his mother, and her coveted Terry Lee doll. The blue car you see here is a 53 Plymouth and the same car that my dad was uh, 
killed in when he had his accident. The newspaper clipping reads, Creek Bed Tragedy, Buster Holland, 40, he was actually 39 at the time, of Lee Grand was found dead in the wreckage of his automobile in the dry bed of Dutchman's Creek near the Merced County town. Splintered railings taken out when the automobile plunged from the highway are seen beneath the bridge. As you can imagine, it was a difficult time for all of us, but my mother pulled us together with her love and we forged forward. Here we are back at my father's sister's house, Annalee and Cecil's house in downtown Lee Grand. Sonia is just getting as cute as ever, isn't she? The three of us are becoming real little people. Now, I remember that shirt that Chad has on so well. I had one just like it. I'm sure he remembers it too. On the left is one of my father's older sisters, my Aunt Grace. And what's a day without the older brother beating me up a little just to keep me in line? On special times, we would go to Lake Yosemite. It was close by and the admission wasn't very much. I have very fond memories there of swimming out to the raft and of course working with Sonia, helping her get into the deep end, which as you see, she's not very interested in doing. We would play on the playground and barbecue and sometimes stay late into the evening. This is my Aunt Annalie again, and then my mom. And this is at a uh, cemetery. I'm not sure whose funeral this would have been, but I think maybe it's Annalie's husband, Cecil, who uh, died not long after dad. The little town of Lee Grand, which has had a consistent population of about 1,500, has an annual Community Day on Memorial Day weekends. This tradition has been carried on for over 90 years. Typically, they would have the festivities and then a parade and barbecue. And uh, it used to be, they don't do this anymore, but they had the naming of uh, May Day, uh, May Day Queen. So the following is footage of that uh, Community Day Parade. This float coming up was made by my mother and a few friends. She did that to advertise her uh, beauty shop. And this uh, photo is an example of uh, one of the vehicles she had in the parade at one time. She took a lot of pride in that.
This is my mom, niece Imogene, and sister Jewel walking up. Here you see the crowning of the May Day Queen. And yes, that's little Clint carrying the pillow up with the uh, crown on it. I remember that day very well. It was windy, as you can see, and the crown, or I tipped it, it anyway, it blew off the pillow, of course, and I had to have somebody help me put it back on. But all the pomp and circumstance we have here surrounding the uh, Mayday Queen in her court.
There's mom helping me down off the uh, benches after my big event. To end part one of these movies, we circle back to Yosemite National Park. The year is about 1953. You see my mom and us kids and my dad's sister and my dad's mother. And there's mom and dad and brother Chad standing in their favorite place, dad holding the old trusty camera. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for the memories. May you and all of those who have gone before us rest in peace. <laughs>